Good afternoon and welcome to ENG 4E Term 2A. I'm your instructor, Mike Laverty, and today is February 6th, 2023. So we're jumping right in here with uh, class number one, unit one, and we will delve into key question number one. So I'm really happy to be teaching this course. I am a, this is my first year uh, teaching at WASA. So before we jump into today's class, I'd like to just introduce introduce myself to everybody just so you know what you're what you're working with so i am the instructor for eng 4e i'm also the instructor for eng 3e so that's grade 11 and grade 12 college workplace education and i am also the instructor for olc 40 that's the uh, literacy course so like i mentioned this is my first year teaching at wasa before teaching at wasa i was working as the librarian at Sacred Heart School, also doing a lot of supply teaching at Sacred Heart School last year. And before that, I was a teacher. Sorry, I was a uh, a librarian working at the public library for about 10 years. And before that, I was a student. And I've had plenty of jobs before then. I've done a lot of customer service have you know uh worked at a quiznos worked in a laundry plant done a lot of a lot of jobs i didn't like like dishwashing done a lot of jobs that i love like this one and i've lived in sulicot ontario for most of my life I'm, I'm born here i've lived most of my life here i have um i've lived in winnipeg and windsor so i've lived in two bigger cities but most of my life has been in a small town so i'm married to my lovely wife natalie and we've got two boys they're 12 and 9 so that's grade 7 and 4 and when i'm not teaching i can you can usually find me at the hockey rink uh, either playing goalie myself or coaching my son's uh, team love playing guitar i love singing i'm a, I'm a you know a huge fan of music and uh lyrics and things like that and i wish i was in a band but mo most of my playing days are you know just just me jamming alone in the basement and, and actually with my uh my nine-year-old son right so he's getting into music and i'm trying to teach him some, him some chords so he's he's just learning how to do it and so it's kind of nice where i can spend uh time with my oldest boy teaching him how to play hockey and just sharing that love of the game with him and then with my my youngest boy i, I we kind of bond over our love a lot our love of music so and of course i love watching the simpsons that's my favorite tv show so maybe i'll incorporate a few quotes from the show from time to time i yeah i grew up watching the show i just love it um and i'm really interested in psychology the brain mental health so i love reading about the brain trying to figure out what makes my brain tick you know first and foremost trying to figure out what's going on with my head and but i'm really interested in like just how we learn and how our brains are set up and especially you know from a teaching point of view right like so what's the best way for me to teach and you know what's the mental states of my students what are they going through how can i support them right because i think you know Sometimes when we're teaching, we just get too focused on, you know, like getting through today's lesson and this little checkpoint we gotta we gotta get through. But it's um yeah, learning learning is hard and it's it's challenging. And if it's if if it's worthwhile and if you're learning something important, it's gonna be hard. And you're gonna have struggles up and down. I know that uh, a lot of people, a lot of students I've talked to from taking this course, you know, it's it, it's often hard to just, just to get started, just to put some words on the page. And, you know, I think we all suffer from feelings of like self-doubt and, you know, like, can I get through this? So I just want to give a shout out to all the students and just say, you know, you, you, you can do this. It's going to be hard work, but if you just take the time and pay attention to the to the course assignments i know you can get through it and and that and my job is to help you is to help you get through it right so that's why i just really stress that that i'm here to answer your questions 
there are no wrong questions you know like if if something isn't clear to you in the units if a question is isn't clear to you then ask you know get get clarification talk to me say mike i don't understand this question can you walk me through it and i would i'd be more than happy to do that so i love when students are engaged in their own learning and you know that's what i'm here for so just i'm, I'm here to help so just reach out anytime you want and, and i'll put up my contact info on the screen in, in a second so before we jump into our classes every day i will put up some announcements so some days will be longer than others depending on what's coming up and what's on our schedule but every day i'll put up some announcements right so we are in week one of classes in term 2a there will be nine classes sorry nine weeks in total and we usually do four classes per week so a total of 36 but there will not be a class held on Monday, February 20th. So that's Family Day or Louis Riel Day if you're living in Manitoba or Saskatchewan. And March break is from the 13th to the 16th. So there's no classes there. But that's not including our nine. So we will be, we will have nine weeks of classes together, not including uh, March 13th to the 16th. So here is a schedule. 4E and G4E term 2A. So we might, this might change as we go along, but this is what I'm hoping we can stick to. We have four units to work through. So I'm hoping that the first two weeks will be devoted to the unit one, weeks three and four, unit two, weeks five and six, unit three, and week seven and eight will be unit four. And then the final exam preparation will be week number nine. So so during week number nine, all of my classes will be devoted to making sure that students are prepared for the final exam. So you will write a final exam and that has to be set up in your community or, you know, wherever you are, someone has to be in the room with you while you write the final exam. So that we call that a proctor or an invigilator and they're just they're just in the room with you. So it takes a bit of setup. You got to make sure someone's available. And if we can't make that work, then we will issue you a course culminating activity. So it's like one big, um, you know, one final assignment that you'll, you'll put together. But option number one is the final exam. And so, you know, more on that as we get closer to closer to April. So ENG 4E is broadcast live Monday to Thursday from 2 p.m. to 2.55 p.m. Central Standard Time. So please, please note, you know, if, if you're watching this on YouTube or if, you know, you, you've you tried to tune in live, just know that our studio is in the process of being moved around. So we've had to shuffle some uh, setup around here in, in the WASA studio. So I'm hoping that we can have these phone lines up and running as soon as possible. We'll be able to broadcast on the radio at 91.9 FM. And people can watch on Bell Express View channel 972. And on the on the bottom of the screen there, that's the Zoom link, right? So if you go to Zoom, it'll, it'll ask you for a meeting ID. And that that's my meeting ID. So when, when I when I broadcast my classes on Zoom, when I share them on Zoom, that's how you can find me. So this information is in the study guide. You can find it out by talking to your DEC, by phoning the WASA building in Sioux Lookout. And I'm also going to be putting this information on on Facebook. So just just so you know. Just so you know when we broadcast and how to how to get on that broadcast and information on how to contact me so very important stuff so usually the day after i broadcast a class i will put it up on my youtube channel 
So if you search for Laberty Wassa, you'll find you'll find me on YouTube. And then I, I organize all of my videos into playlists. So if you're looking for ENG4E, you could search that on my website, on, on my YouTube channel, or you can go to the playlist and you will find an ENG4E playlist. So that'll be as of tomorrow, February 7th, right? So once I once I have this file ready to go, I'll put it up on there. And that's where you can watch them at any time. So I know that some students take this course as an independent learner, where other students are registered in the term. So if, if you're registered in the term, you have the nine weeks to complete it. If you don't, you can you can complete it until the graduation date, which will be uh, you know like the middle of June. But it, it's important to stay on top of your on on top of the, these assignments, and I would highly you know, strongly suggest that you try to, you know, if you're doing an independent learner, try to stick to like, you know, one or two courses at the most and, you know, try to be consistent and to, you know, get assignments to your instructor, you know, at least once a week, just so I can give you feedback and I can help you improve on where you're going. Right. So, so more on that. So if you're submitting work, you've got a few ways you can do this. So you can always just rely upon your GEC to scan and email it or fax it, right? So they'll help you to, to use one of those three options. You can do this yourself, um, scanning and emailing it. And if, if you're doing it yourself, you need to send it to studentwork at nnec.on.ca and CC it to myself. So I'll put my email address up on the screen on one slide here. So, but it's important to send the work to the to the two places, right? So student work at nnec.on.ca and my email address. You can also fax pages to that number listed on the screen. So 1-800-463-7852. And you can also take photos with your phone and then email uh, or send that on Facebook Messenger, right? So if you're if you're taking photos with your phone, just make sure that you you take the time to give me a clear, you know, take the time to get it, you know, as as straight and kind of legible. I need I need to be able to to see your work, so you can take photos and then you can send those photos to me through email or on Facebook Messenger. Some students are writing on Google Documents and then sharing the Google Doc with me. So there's many ways you can get that work uh to your teacher you just have and, and if you're unsure about it you just got to reach out to someone and, and they can help you with that i i do recommend the adobe scan app it's it's a free app you can put on your phone or your tablet and it helps you with taking pictures and then it's got a lot of really useful features that help you clean them up and straighten them out right so because it's it's really useful that way. So it's useful for you for getting good pictures of your own work, and it's helpful for your me or teacher. So I can I can read your work and not have to kind of second guess what's actually being submitted. So here's how you can reach out to me directly. So that's my email address. You can take note of that on the screen. So that's mlaberty at nnecschools.org. You can add me as a friend on Facebook and chat with me on Messenger. And if you search Laverty Wassa on Facebook, then you'll find you'll find me, you'll find my profile on there. And like I said, you can add me as a friend on Facebook, that's optional. If you do add me as a friend on Facebook, you'll just see my occasional posts reminding you about deadlines. And I try to give students just, in, just important information about the course. So you can add me as a friend on there, or just we can communicate through Messenger. It's I have a lot of students sending me work that way, so that, that's very convenient for me and them. There's two phone numbers up on the screen. So if you, if you phone the WASA office at 1-807-737-1488, extension 2211, you'll get my extension. If you phone and the receptionist picks up, just ask for Mike and then they will direct your call. And if 
you don't want to get any long distance charges, then you can, of course, phone 1-800-667-3703. So that's our free long distance number. You're going to want to reach out to me Monday through Friday, 9 a.m. to 3 p.m. Central Standard Time. That's when you're going to find me sitting at my desk. Of course, I'm teaching from 1 to 3, but, you know, 9 till 1 a.m., um, or sorry, 9 a.m. till 1 p.m. That's probably the best time to to reach out to me. But if, if you do reach out to me in the evening or in the very early morning, then I will check that message uh, as soon as I get in and I'll make, I'll make yours a priority, right? So I, I'm usually not very active with my email and my Facebook messenger outside of my, my office hours. That's when I'm actually in the building. But I do, I do want students reaching out to me, asking questions. It's a, it's, it's a huge part of this course. So please feel free to do that and get clarification on anything you might need clarification on, right? So if you want to send in work, you know, send that work in as soon as you can. And just one quick note too about submitting work. You, you don't have to finish off an entire unit and you can send me one assignment and I'll mark it and get it back to you, right? So I, I, I really prefer it if you send in smaller groups of, smaller groups of assignments, like that's, that's, that works best for me. And it's, it's very important that you get feedback on your work. So this is a workplace preparation course. So I think that's something that you should embrace and it's part of life where it's a give and take and you, you have to be open to criticism and open to someone looking at your work and, you know, taking it apart and, and for good and bad. Right. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to show you the, the things you're doing well. So it's not, that's not, you know, like, when, when you criticize someone, it, it doesn't always have to be negative, right? So, you know, uh, it can be positive, right? It can, it's just, I just need to see where you're at and then kind of give you some direction. And I, I often compare this to, you know, having a hockey coach watch you in the middle of a game or like watching someone, somebody watching you do anything and, the, and like you're performing or you're doing something and someone just takes you aside and said, okay, you're doing this well, but have you thought about doing this? and so you're not just throwing assignments out into the void and getting a number on it, right? So I will give you a grade, you know, I'll give you a seven out of 10 or a nine out of 10, but I'll always give you some kind of written feedback too, right? So it's not just about the number, it's about, you know, ways you can improve and ways you can make your work even stronger, right? So sometimes I'll give a student a 10 out of a 10, but I'll still give them some feedback and still say like, good job, but like, Maybe think about this and next time you do it, think about that. But the most important thing I want to emphasize here is just to send me small batches of assignments, right? Just send me, you know, if, if you sit down one night and work on three of them, send me those three, right? That's always best, right? You don't have to collect them all into one unit. Just send me whatever you have and I'll mark it and get it back to you as soon as I can. Okay. And your next steps. Okay, so I need you to contact me through email, Facebook, Messenger, phone, or text. Um, let me know. Let me know you're out there. Um, let me know if you have the course material. So that that's a really important question for me. I, I need to know that you have the course material. You have what you need to be successful in this course. So, and, and we'll talk about that in a second. You need to read ENG 4E, the study guide, and you need to read unit one of ENG 4E. So those are two things you can do on your own um, right off the bat. You can read the study guide, read all of unit one, and then get yourself started um, working on the assignments. And reach out to me if you haven't done so already. So, I, I just need some form of communication from you just to let me know you're out there and you've, you're, you've, 
even if you haven't gotten started and you can't hand anything in, just just drop me a line. Just say say you're here, you're registered in the course, you're good to go, and then we'll take things from there. So every every day I will put up a similar slide like this one, and and, and it'll say today's lesson, and I'll, and I give this, I'll give this, I'll give, I'll give students a snapshot of what we're gonna do today. Okay, so. So we're going to look at an image of the day. So on Mondays, I'll put up like an image that'll either be funny or a quote or, you know, like just some image I found online or some other source that gets the conversation going, gets our minds onto the activity. Then we're going to review the ENG 4E study guide. Then we're going to review ENG 4E unit one. We're going to look at the nine parts of speech. And then we'll look at key question one, which deals with those nine parts of speech. Our learning goals for today will be to review ENG 4E study guide and unit one. So we're going to look at those two documents, the, the study guide and unit one for ENG 4E. We're going to learn about the nine parts of speech to help us answer key question one. So We'll have our lesson plan, our learning goals, and finally our success criteria. So you'll you will know you're successful if you have taken notes of important information found in the course material, and if you can use your knowledge of the nine parts of speech to answer key question number one. All right. So with that in mind, here is our image of the day. Go is the shortest complete sentence in the English language. So we're going to spend a lot of time in this course talking about sentences and how we build sentences, right? Because sent, uh, the sentence is, is a very manageable chunk of writing that we can look at, right? So, so go is the shortest complete sentence in the English language. So and I would argue that it should probably be written go exclamation mark, right? It can't just be go period. It's got to be go exclamation point because that, that's somebody giving a command like go, right? So that, that's a very specific kind of sentence, but it's arguably the shortest sentence you can write in the English language. Two letters. Two letters and one exclamation point. So three characters all together. But up on the screen here, I've gotten, you know, sentences from simple to complex. So each sentence adds a few more words and, and a bit more in complexity. So we've got go and we've got go away, I'm busy, right? So much different meaning, that's four words. Let's go to the movies, five words. Uh, should I stay or should I go? That's... Uh, seven words that's a line from the class right should i stay or should i go um there is only one way we can go from here and the final sentence well having my lunch comma i decided that i would go for a bike ride after work so sentences come in long and short they they are simple they are complex and they achieve different things, right? Some of them end in period, some of them end in exclamation mark, some of them end in question marks, right? So different sentences that fulfill different purposes for different audiences, right? So that's that's a, a big part of this course, right? It's just learning how to how to craft sentences, learning how to craft long ones, short ones, medium length ones for different audiences, for different purposes, with different tones involved, right? So that's our introduction to the course. So letters, so it's a good way of thinking about things building up in complexity, right? So um, letters make words. We combine words to make phrases. Phrases make up clauses. Clauses make sentences. So we're, we're gonna we're gonna get into that, you know, in, in a couple of classes from now. We're gonna talk about, you know. Um, you know, words definitely make up sentences, but we can even break it down even further, right? So um, once we have sentences, we can make paragraphs. 
once we have paragraphs, we can make essays, stories, novels, et cetera, right? But it all it all builds up from little pieces. And that's a focus of ENG 4E is we is we we sort of like have different ways we can zoom in on something. We we can take the wide view, the long shot, and we can look at an entire book or an entire piece of writing and just say, what form of writing is this? And then we can zoom in on the sentence by sentence level and then even zoom in on like the word choices we make to make up those sentences, right? So, so when, when you're reading and when you're writing, uh, you're paying attention to things at, you know, very different, very different kind of levels of organization, right? And the way a sentence is organized is different from the way a paragraph is organized, from the way an entire essay is organized, right? But it's all organized. It all has structure. It can all be taken apart. It can be analyzed. So, you know, it, it's very almost like scientific in a way when, when, you, when you break down a piece of writing and, and you look at it and you say, how does it work? How does it not work? You know, and then that's a, a big part of this course is to give you that terminology to let you know, you know, how, how to break down language and how to how to understand it. So, and I also want to stress that, you know, people, if you can speak a language relatively well, sometimes it's a bit harder to write it. And, you know, so, you, and then you, you may understand a lot of these things. You just don't have the words to put to them, right? So we're going we're gonna to jump into a discussion on the parts of speech. And, you know, kids as young as three or two, they, they, they know what, what a verb is. They, know, they can't tell you what a noun or a verb is unless they're like really smart, but they know how to use them, right? They don't know what pronouns are, but they use them all the time, right? So I think you know, you can use a language, you can speak it well, but when it comes to writing, that's when things get a little bit trickier, right? So I, th I think that's probably a common experience for a lot of people. Like they, you know, they can read the language well enough, they can speak it, they can have conversations. And even if you've been speaking English for a long time, but then when it comes to writing things down, that's where you you might have a little bit of trouble and, and you might need some it might need some work just to clarify a few concepts and that's where this course comes in handy okay so i also want to quickly note that we we will be reading a novel in this course it's called where the rivers meet so it's, it's a really good book it's very well written um it's it's a little bit older, but it's still, I think, still quite relevant. It takes place in BC. Um, but I think that there's a lot of parallels with people who grew up um, in, in, in Northern Ontario, in Ontario in general, right? So I think you're going to find some, you know, if you grew up in a Northern community, if you grew up in, in Ontario, you're, you're going to find some similarities here. So we will discuss this novel in unit two so i'm not going to be discussing it at all or not not really much at all in in our unit one discussions but i will bring it up because it'll be a, it'll be a primary focus of of unit two so please let me know if you need a copy so that's important because i'd like you to start reading this as soon as you can so it, it's a, it's important that you start reading this as soon as you can and so by, by, the, by the time we're on to unit two, then you've at least read half the book or at least a couple of chapters and you can jump right in. So, so just let me know if you need it. And then once you've had it, start reading it as soon as you can. All right. So before we do this, before we, before we jump into the nine parts of speech, I do want to talk a little bit about the the study guide.
All right, so you should, should see the study guide up on the screen. It's it's not a very long, not a very long document, but it, it's good for us to just just go over a couple of things. So, so there is the study guide. It's so this is a full credit course gives you the opportunity to develop practical written and oral communication skills, especially for today's workplace. So there, there is a, a decided workplace uh, emphasis on this course. As, as we get towards the end, you'll work on cover letters and resumes, but it primarily it's, it's about communication and, and, and giving you a chance to develop your, your communication skills written oral um so reading writing across you know a variety of skills right so i've gone over some of this stuff already this is my office hours of course nine to three this is you know the ways to get in touch with me so that's all found in your study guide the, the fax number my email address my coordinates on Facebook and YouTube, Laverty Wassa. So I'm I'm the same person on Facebook and YouTube. So if you just search Laverty Wassa, you'll find me. You can subscribe to my YouTube channel or just watch the videos you find on there. And you can add me as a friend on Facebook or just simply communicate with me on Messenger. So our course material. So we have the study guide, which we're looking at right now, but we also have units one to four, and we have where the rivers meet the, the novel, right? So we have the study guide, four units, and the novel where the rivers meet. So you need to let me know if you need that uh, as soon as possible. If you don't have any of those assignments, let me know right away and we'll figure it out. We'll get those in your hands. So the evaluation, your unit assignments are worth 70% of your final grade. The culminating activity from unit four is worth 10%. And then you'll write a final exam or a course culminating activity worth 20% for a, a grand total of 100%. So we do have four units. The first one is elements of written communication. So Unit one is going to be a lot of emphasis on grammar and writing and the parts of speech and, you know, writing a sentence, writing a paragraph, organizing your thoughts, things like that. Unit two is where we're going to talk about media and literature. So that's where we're going to do a lot of our novel study, where the, where the rivers meet and talking about different forms of media in general. And then units three and four the emphasis will be on workplace communication and succeeding in a workplace setting and with unit four is a push to enter the workforce so even even if you're already in the workforce now if you're already in a job it, it's going to be about you know entering the workforce or maybe entering a new workforce right so uh polishing up your resume doing job searches learning how to present yourself professionally so you can you can get the job that you need the career path that you need to be successful and then at the end of the study guide there are learning skills and work habits that students are expected to 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 practice these will be on your final report card once you once you complete uh, the assignment, right? So, so you can just review review the achievement chart. This is the these are, these are the levels that I will use as a teacher when when marking um, marking your assignments, right? So, having a strong sense of audience and purpose, using the conventions of language, right? So this is. Just, just a way for us to evaluate how you're doing in the course. Okay, and that is the study guide. And now I'm gonna pull up the 
our, our unit one, and we'll have a look at that together just to make sure we're all on the same page. Oops. Okay, no, I don't. Okay, so here is ENG 4E workplace preparation. So as I mentioned, elements of written communication, that's the first unit, that's, that's the general theme, that's my contact information right there. Got a table of contents. So there's the course overview, all of our four units. There are key questions for each unit. And there is, of course, our, our novel, where the, where, where the rivers meet. So as soon as you jump into the textbook, you'll see, or sorry, the unit book, you'll see that there's activity one. And then each activity so is divided into into key questions, right? So this one example, it, it starts off discussing the the parts of speech, and which I'll go through in my slide deck in a moment. So pronouns, verbs, adjectives, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions, interjections. So it gives you some reading material, and then if you keep flipping through the page, keep scrolling through you will get to a key question, all right? So you you are responsible for answering the key questions. So you can either, I mean, if, if there's room, you can write it on the page itself and photocopy that in. But I think um, the best way for you to do this would be to write things down on a, on a separate piece of paper, so on a separate Word document or on a separate piece of, of, of paper, you know, write down key question one, unit one, and then just, you know, write down the part of speech to be identified. And so, and so for this assignment, you'll see that you have to identify all these underlined words and tell me what are they are they nouns are they pronouns are they adjectives are they verbs slash participles are they adverbs are they prepositions are they conjunctions right and there are no interjections in the paragraph so if we go back to our our image of the day go uh go is a is a verb but it can also be like considered an interjection um but we'll more on that in a second so so that that's how that's how the unit assignments work you'll have some backup some context like punctuation marks some commonly misspelled words so you, so you read all of this stuff and you make notes of on it and then you get to a key question right so you so read everything that leads up to the key question and then when it comes time to write the key question, you know, get out a separate piece of paper or start a fresh word document and write, you know, key question number two, right? So just always identify to me, um, you know, whenever possible, like your name, your community, uh, the, the chorus itself. Yeah, so your name, your community, the course code you're taking, um, the unit, and the assignment number. So as, as much information as possible on, on the sheet of paper so I know, you know, who's submitting it, for what course, and what unit. So just give me as much information as possible, and that'll help me to understand which assignment you're working on, right? So, so if you just keep flipping through this, there's a lot of assignments in here. So key questions one through, I believe, I believe it's up to, K 
key question 21. Yeah, so key question 21. So there's there's key questions one through 21 for you to answer from unit one. And then once you've got those key questions done, then you are responsible for the culminating activity. So at the end of every unit, there's going to be a longer activity, which is known as the culminating activity. The culminating activity for ENG 4E is writing a short story. And so it's worth 80 marks. So we're going to spend a lot of time talking about it. Not today, but I just wanted to just wanted to bring it to your attention. So the way you want to approach this is, is to look at the culminating assignment as, you know, and that's what the word culminating means, right? Every, when, when things culminate, they come together. So all of the skills that you've learned and practiced in unit one, if you've put the work in, if you've done the reading, and if you've if you've understood the concepts, you know, more or less, you don't you don't have to be perfect, but if you know you've you put the work in and you've tried to understand those topics and 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 worked through and gotten yourself lots of practice on those new skills, then this culminating activity is your chance to kind of show off what you've learned and to write something longer, right? So you know, writing longer things is always hard, always harder than writing shorter things, you know, for, for obvious reasons, right? It's harder to keep something together and, and to make sure it all fits together when it, when it's a longer piece of writing. So, and then you'll write about one of these five topics. So more on that as, as the course progresses, but you'll do a cover page, a draft copy and a final copy. And this is a very foundational you know, huge concept of this course that writing is a process and, you know, it's, you know, I, sometimes I mark someone's writing and I can tell that it's, it's their rough ideas. It's their rough thoughts. It's the first thing they thought of. They just, they just threw an answer down on the page. And that's like step one of the process, right? You've got to like throw your rough ideas on the page and just jot down stuff. But then you have to work through it and, and maybe make it a little bit better and, and pick out the best ideas, right? So as, as we do this course, I'm going to be giving you lots of strategies for how to do that, how to select your best ideas and how to how to come up with good ideas, right? It's hard to come up with good ideas and how to, um, you know, just, just things like that, right? So, but it, it's a process and we, we take our rough ideas and we make them better. And we have other people read our work and they give us feedback, right? So it's that that's the process that I'm trying to encourage everybody to, to follow. Okay. So back to the slide deck. All right, so we're talking about the nine parts of speech. All right, so this is the, these are the building blocks of the English language, okay? And then not just English, but like many languages, or if not, you know, every, every language ever spoken on the face of the earth is going to have some of these nine parts of speech, right? So they're, they're, it's not just English. These are common to to languages found all across the globe. And then some languages have some of these nine parts um and i'm wondering if maybe some of them have even different parts of speech than we do but these are these are these are how we divide the parts of speech and then so what they what the parts of speech are is every word in a sentence has a function like it, it's there for a reason and and it does it it's 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 doing something to help the sentence out so it it, it falls into one of these nine parts of speech so we'll just jump right into that so the most, the most basic one and the first one that most people learn are nouns, right? So a noun names a person, place, or thing. So nouns include teacher, Sioux lookout, happiness, right? So they can be people, they can be places, or they can be things. And so it's important to note that a thing can be 
like an object, like a physical object, like a, like a desk or a hammer or a wristwatch. But a thing can also be like an abstract idea, right? So like happiness or like democracy or, you know, like uh, emotions, right? So they're, but they're things, right? So noun, so noun is a pretty big category and it it's basically things, but specific kinds of things like, like people, places, and, you know, objects, think, you know, things like that. Verbs, these are action words. So ran, run, running, different forms of the same verb, right? So the verb is an action word. So when we write sentences, we're sharing ideas with readers, right? So we introduce ideas and then we tell people what those things are doing, right? So that's um, like if you read a fiction book, right? Uh, a mystery novel or a spy novel, there's going to be people in that novel and the people are going to be doing things. That is like some of the most basic elements of, of a sentence. It's about something and something is either happening to that thing or they're, are they're doing something. Okay, pronouns. These are words that take the place of a noun. So I, he, she, it, for example. So, um, you know, so Mike Laverty is a teacher with WASA. He teaches ENG4E, right? So the word he takes the place of my full name, right? Um, that dog over there is a husky, you know, it it likes to run, right? So then it takes the place of husky, right? So, but it's the pronoun takes the place of a noun and more on that as we go along. Adverbs. So these are, so adverbs and adjectives are what we call modifiers. And then modifiers, they change something or they, you know, they modify it. They 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 put a they put a twist on it or they give us additional information. So adverb. So an an easy way to to remember this is you know the word verb is right there in the word. So an adverb is adding to a verb. It tells us how an action is done. So quickly, slowly, expertly. So um, someone can speak quickly. They can speak slowly they can speak expertly right so the verb is speak adverb tells me how they spoke adjective it describes a noun um and then i just wrote down the five senses there that an adjective doesn't have to be from there but a, a lot of them do right so adjectives they often tell us what things look like what they sound like what they feel like what they taste like, what they smell like, right? So soft, bright, red, sour, hot. So they're descriptive words, right? But they're not describing actions. They're describing things or sometimes an entire sentence, right? So they describe a noun or a group of words. Okay, article, uh, they're used before nouns and they tell us, you know, so an apple, a bike ride, the bike ride. So there's only three. There's only three articles in the English language. So the best definition and the best one that you're probably going to remember is a, an, and the. If you see those three words, that's what you're looking at. It's an article. All right, conjunctions. These are the T-I-O-N words here. So conjunction, preposition, and interjection. So conjunctions, these, these join words or, or groups of words together, and, but, and yet. Uh, prepositions are relationship words. They show where things are in relation to other things, like from, in, beside, on, under, over, uh, during, while, so they, they, they also show like a time relationship. Interjection, these are words or phrases to show strong emotion like wow or hey. I'm going to come back to this in a second, okay? Um, just want to make sure we have enough time. 
So key question one, you're looking at the parts of speech. So it's worth five marks. So identify the parts of speech. So nouns, pronouns, adjectives, verbs, participles, adverbs, prepositions, conjunctions. Uh, there's a hint here that there's no interjections in the paragraph. And here is our paragraph, okay? So it was a sunny, sunny morning in late March when Terry and his friend Joe left Kingfisher Lake by snowmobile to travel to Wanaman Lake. They quickly covered the distance between the two communities and hurried to the home of Corey, an old buddy of theirs. Corey works as a filing clerk at the nursing station in Wanaman Lake and regularly writes memos and emails during the week. He also assists with developing monthly reports. Since this was a Sunday, however, they would have time to spend together. They talked and laughed for about five hours, and then Terry and Joe returned home, happy but exhausted. So that's the paragraph. Your job is to is to write down every underlying word and, and to say, you know, what part of speech is that word. I want I wanted to give you a brief note here. So um So it's important to note that sometimes a word can have different, it, it can be a different part of speech depending on how it's used, right? So um, words like a, an, and the are always articles. But let's take a word like emails, for example. Marcel sent 14 emails before 9 a.m. Um, so in that case, emails is a noun. It's, it's a thing that he sends. He sent 14 of them. The principal emails the teachers every week about their performance. So in that case, emails is a verb. It's something the principal does. I don't want to receive emails from my boss. Okay, emails is a thing in that sentence. When class is canceled, the teacher emails the students to let them know. Now it's a verb, right? So depending on the sentence, that word emails can be a verb or it can be a noun. So if we go back to our sentence here and we got this sentence right here, Corey works as a filing clerk at the nursing station in Wanaman Lake and regularly writes memos and emails during the week. So writes is a verb, that's what he does. What does he write? He writes memos and emails. So I won't tell you the answer, but hopefully you've, you've picked it up. So really pay attention to that okay um is it a verb is it a noun it might be different depending on the context of the sentence okay so without giving you the answers to this one i thought we would just briefly look at um an article that I, I found online. So this, this is from the Globe and Mail, okay? So it, it, it recently got revealed that Netflix is, is finally becoming serious on cracking down on password sharing. So the article says, network Netflix is cracking down on password sharing. Here's what Canadians need to know. So Netflix is a proper noun. So a proper noun is, a, is something that names something specific. So proper nouns are people's first and last name, always get capitalized, the names of, of places like towns and cities and provinces and countries always are capitalized. The names of, of businesses and corporations like Netflix, always capital N, right? So that's a noun. Netflix says. All right, so says is a verb, that's what they're doing. Netflix says shared accounts. All right, so now, it, now in the English language, we usually have the adjective first and then the thing it's modifying second. So like in French, for example, it's, you know, la, la crayon rouge, right? So it's like, it's, it's, it's the crayon red. It's the red, it, it's the pencil red. But in English, it's it's the modifier and then the thing that gets modified. So it's so we're not just talking about accounts, we're talking about shared accounts. So the word shared is an adjective. And it modifies the word accounts, which is a noun. 
Netflix says shared accounts are meant to be used by people who live in a single household. Again, there you go. So single modifies household. So single is an adjective modifying the word household. Um, live is a verb. Um, um, stream, that's a verb, right? So, you know, 10, 15 years ago, we didn't use that word the way we do now, but now it's a verb, right? So you stream. Um, from is a preposition. It, it tells us where they're streaming from. They're streaming from the same account. So we've got an article, the, um, and but don't live in the same home. That That's a conjunction. Okay, so we don't have time to go through all of this, but We'll, we'll, we'll touch upon this tomorrow. That's all the time we have for today. Thanks for tuning in and we will see you tomorrow.